Well, welcome back to the big board. So at the, uh, at the risk of exposing the absolute ineptitude of my ability to play any war game, let alone Pacific War, I thought let's walk through a uh, strike uh, as best as I can and let's just see what happens. And I've already gone through it all and rolled all the dice, but we'll kind of talk through it to uh, the best of my ability and we'll uh, try and point at a few things here and there. <coughs> Excuse me, let's grab a pencil. So Task Force 11 was, uh, and let me, let me actually, before we get started, let's have a look at where we are in the sequence of play so you know what's going on. So we'll just scooch over here and you'll see that we're in the disadvantage movement phase is where we were and then we are now doing the disadvantage air missions so previously all the way up here we had had advantage termination advantage movement and the uh, americans had their opportunity to do their air missions for which they elected to do none just because of the ranges weren't conducive to uh, giving them a good shot at anything number one and number two uh, really the, the number of un air units they have kind of puts them a little bit on the back foot just when you look at the, the potential for inflicting damage, unless you roll really well. So uh, we don't want to necessarily be re relying on the dice for the win. So it was the Japanese move. They moved uh, one, uh, I think one hex. Uh, they had already been spotted, so we didn't search for them again. But then they decided to launch a strike. Now, my, my understanding of, of how the strike rules work here, and we'd spotted this guy a little bit earlier on, uh, which is, in fact, I guess I should tell you who that is. That is the uh, Saratoga with two escorts. He's got uh, the Portland with three hits on it and, and just a, uh, a destroyer in the screen, right? But they're carrying four steps of aircraft with level one, level one skilled fighters, right? Level, level one skilled pilots. So I want to just see how the whole combat situation works. So we we got after it, right? So let's zoom in now a little bit. So you've seen the you've seen the big picture. We're now just going to scale back here a little bit and do this. And hopefully that'll stay still. Okay, so we sent in uh, one one group of units, but we're we're sending some as escort and some as uh, as the mission mission units. So I have four steps here and I have five steps here. So we set we set four as the escort, uh, and we had um, uh, five steps coming in to do the the strike mission against the Saratoga in this hex, excuse me, just off screen. So we would need to spot this air mission as it moves through the various hexes. And we waited till it was uh, right on top of us uh, to do the roll, gives us a much higher percentage chance of seeing what's going on and seeing, and seeing if we spot the guys, which indeed we did. Let me grab the American search panel and you'll see here, uh, searching for air, I, I, I'm going to spot them pretty much anyway, and we're we're looking for, uh, you know, we're looking for a, a zero through a six to spot them. So as long as we spot them, then I, I believe we're in good shape to actually go ahead, and uh, that allows us to alert units, put them up into cap, and or intercept. So I then uh, elected as the Americans to split this force up. Uh, the four steps that are available, I put two on intercept mission to try and tackle the uh, the the guys who are going to do the actual strike, and then two went into cap to fight the fighters. Right. So uh, we then go into a simul simultaneous resolution exercise here, where when we when we resolve the cap, we are going to look at the this strength here seven. Right. Uh, that's the air to air fight. Right, and so air to air fight fighting capability, and I had uh, four steps, so uh, I'm going to take that seven and uh, deduct the uh, that seven there. I'm just going to check here to make sure I did that correctly. 
you add that seven here and deduct the two uh, two damage, uh, two lost steps from it, and that's going to give us a net five. And then we're going to go to the combat table, and this will be uh, pretty straightforward. I'll zoom back out here again, and hopefully this time Mark Herman won't be mad at me for for missing the uh, for moving my finger across the column. Hey, Mark. Uh, so I said five, did I? Seven minus two was five. So we look at the five strength. And what did I roll for those guys? Let me see. Seven minus two, five. I rolled a two. So seven minus five. We're on the five column. I rolled a two. We're going to go on the yellow here and come down. And we're going to look at air combat. And it's, uh, it's going to be uncoordinated strike versus cap. <clears throat> one, one step right? Uh, so we're going to put one step of damage on these guys. We fired back and missed, but the mission, uh, the strike against the mission, which would have a strength of six, less the, less the appropriate number of steps re reduced, uh, we roll, actually rolled uh, really well there. I think we rolled a, a, I can't remember now, where did I write that, write that one down? Bear with me here. Yeah, I rolled a one. So it was six minus four, a strength of two, uh, and I rolled a one, and that gave us one hit on the mission, so mission uh, units. Now, if I had got two hits here, that would have forced this unit to abort, which would have been really nice. But in the end, it didn't matter. The strike, uh, the strike would then go in after we conduct flak. So we roll for flak, and flak is another little table, uh, another little uh, set of details here. You can see that, right? We are going to be doing... Uh, flak unimproved versus air and we're just going to look at the number of uh, flak points that we have we have two for the destroyer none for the portland because it's taken three steps of, of damage and then a two for the uh, saratoga uh, for a total strength of four and we would then roll for that no effect uh, actually rolled a nine on that one so no joy so i was thinking well you know it's uh, going to be dire straits for <laughs> for the yanks uh here but this this strike goes in and i roll an eight and we don't even need to worry about looking that up we know that's a just a straight up miss because we're we're going to go in here and look at the strike combat f versus naval and you'll see right here, this column is going to be, if I go all the way up to the strength of the label, uh, anything higher than a five, basically on four strength or, or uh, more, is a miss. So uh, so that was a miss. So now we just, uh, all these guys, so this now has two, two losses, right? So that goes away. This guy now has three losses, so we need a little, little marker, which I'll need to clip real quick. Now, we, what we do now is we return the Japanese aircraft back to their base or to their carrier. And that is the end of that particular disadvantage air mission phase if I'm not doing any other, any other strikes. Now, it would be possible if we wanted to look down here and zoom out a little bit. I could with... This task force here e execute a strike against Guadalcanal. We could certainly do that. Uh, I may do another video for that, and we'll uh, we'll see. But otherwise, that's the end of this, the phase. We're going to return these guys back to their little aircraft carrier, uh, put it over on the on the stack. There will be no intercepting of those units on the way back. Uh, the Americans are going to be happy to uh, potentially. Uh, survive this little exercise just as they are and that was the strike against the Saratoga so thought that might be fun to have a quick look at please by all means be gracious with your commentary <laughs> and uh, uh, gentle uh, first time back at this game in quite a while with the airstrikes and all that sort of good stuff I've been doing primarily naval combat up until now but happily happy to hear your feedback and comments on any errors or or uh, things I didn't uh, clearly announce or discuss with you so that uh, we can help others learn how to play the game as well 
Very straightforward, although it may seem complicated, may seem, I may probably made it more complicated than it needs to be, but you've got a little flow chart here. Uh, let me zoom out for a sec for you. Got a little flow chart here that shows you how to do all this. And then you just follow the, the rules by number and it's pretty all, all pretty straightforward. So uh, not complicated at all. It's just making the choices of when to search, how to attack, you know, who attacks with how much. Do we want to leave some reserves here, uh, keep some guys back to provide capital, that sort of good stuff later on. Uh, well, that, that tends to not really matter because we're going to be at the end of a battle cycle and then rotate back around to see who, who's up next. So they will have been theoretically been rearmed and refueled and all that sort of good stuff uh, is my understanding anyway. Of course, if, uh, if these guys uh, here uh, in, in their advantage uh, air mission phase, they could have launched a strike here and, and attack these guys. But they were just, they were actually one back here and it made it uh, just a little risky and these aren't terribly strong anyway. There's only uh, three steps of uh, aircraft there, and I didn't want to risk losing them, given that that's part of the victory conditions, is keeping air on the on the base there. All right, talk to you soon. I've waffled on enough. Ciao.